My name is Johnny Kovacevic and I'm going to be guiding, guiding us through lithium for the next 20 minutes. And it's effectively a story between hard rock and brine. Where's the opportunity? Where's the pitfall? Will there be demand? And we look at a lot of the prognostication. We have to look at these forecasts and unfortunately for these, the people that have to do this, Mike Tyson used to have a saying, everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. There are variables, be it a black swan or a gray swan, that you cannot control. And that's always hanging there over all the commodities. We are at a hinge of history. For those that saw my talk yesterday, this is a significant period of time in the global energy matrix. And you have to take into consideration the, um, the jurisdictional differences because Japan is different than China, is different than India, Europe, America, and they're all going through their different um, pivots within this um, hinge of history. I'm going to introduce my friends, and we have three participants here. And if you just want to give a quick 15 seconds, uh, starting from the far end, and we'll um, go through our little panel here, please. I'm uh, Jose de Castro, I am Argentinian. I uh, 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 represent uh, Lithium Chile and had uh, the experience to be in charge of Oro Cobre operation during more than six years, I start up the unique uh, lithium carbonate plant uh, from brine in the last 20 years. Okay. My name is Simon Dyakovsky. I'm representing Cypress Development today. Uh, our CEO, Bill Willoughby, sends his regrets. He's down on site working on some uh, upcoming news that we'll talk about in a second. Hi, I'm Mike Kobler. I'm with American Lithium. We're primarily fo focused on clay stones in Nevada. So to start the panel, I'm going to mix it between the macro and the micro, and we're going to talk about each of the companies that these uh, gentlemen are, are, are managing. But first of all, the global energy today, only 19% of final energy is electrification. So that's going to climb in the next 30 years to about 50%. Like I said yesterday, this is probably the most important chart that you're going to look at in this entire conference, in my view, because the things that are going to enable a profound expansion in global electricity are things that are mined. Of course, copper, lithium, batteries, everything that's present in this room. What took 120 years is going to happen two and a half, three times a greater magnitude in only 30 years. This is the primary reason when you eliminate emissions from uh, global energy, that's only possible with electricity. And this is where city after city, country after country have now mandated that in the next 10 to 20 years, it will be forbidden to buy and sell incumbent fossil fuel based emission led transportation. I follow energy. I'm an expert in the, in the field of the oil and gas sector, power systems, and of course here in the commodities that feed into this. I'm frequently featured on shows uh, throughout the world, uh, namely these uh, popular American shows, and it's always with respect to energy. So let's talk about hard rock versus brine. You can see a forecast here from Morgan Stanley Bank, and there's a, a discussion that's taking place with the professionals and with the banks. What do you see? You come from Chile. This is the world leader in lithium production. What's going on in Chile, and why is your company unique, and how do you factor in with these cost curves? Yes, in general, uh, in the continental brines in South America, I mean Chile, Argentina, and maybe in some moments in, in Bolivia, there are a mix of understanding related on, the, on how that will be advancing. I think uh, there are a lot of challenges related with the uh, understanding mainly, because it's more uh, a chemical industry than a, than a mining in general when you are starting to advance after exploration. And, and uh, independent of that, that is a technical point of view, there are other kind of things that are going around related with permitting and so on. Uh, as you following up uh, the, the lithium market in the last years, there was a lot of expectation related with new projects in, in the area and, uh, and not so much was advancing. I think that was the main uh, uh, bottleneck. 
a, a lack of understanding about the, 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 the jump between exploration to the processing and to the marketing because the lithium has other kind of, uh, of features. It's firstly a mining uh, resource, secondly it's a very high quality chemi chemical uh, material, I mean the, the quality is very important. And, uh, and the last one is your face-to-face -face customer uh, relationship. I think that uh, that kind of challenges is passing through. Currently, uh, the, the people that, has, uh, that are involved is more and more uh, taking care of this. So my perception is in the near future, the new projects that will be advancing quicker than before in general. In our case, in the case of Lithium Chile, we had a, a very good package of properties that there will be in the in the core of the business, very close to Atacama, Atacama Salar, that was originally, historically, the best place for production, for lithium production. And we have currently a good team based on this kind of ideas and this kind of approach. Uh, Brian has some of their advantages and weaknesses when you compare with the, with the, 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 the rock. But I think that is the main, the main factor that should be considered in general for brines. By a show of hands, who here has participated in hard rock or brine lithium shares in the past two, three years? Probably most people. Simon, your, your project's located in Nevada, and there's this, when you talk about hard rock, this is typically a Canada or Australia situation. You guys are both located in Nevada. You speak with investors. What, what is their understanding with this hard rock and clay situation? Yeah, so there's really two um, misconceptions on, uh, on clays which sit in between hard rocks and brine. Um, the first is there's a, uh, a misconception over Kings Valley which was uh, developed by Lithium Americas a number of years ago. Um, the problem there was a process uh, complication where there's presence of hectorite clay that required uh, an autoclave roaster, which uh, which came late in their development process, and uh, and kind of cast a pall over investment in um, lithium uh, clay lithium projects through the cycle. So Cypress is a little bit different. We are hosted in an illite clay, which uh, does not necess necessitate the uh, presence of a roaster in our in our process flow sheet. Um, between kind of northern Mexico and Nevada, there's four major clay deposits. Uh, Cypress, Clayton Valley being one, um, Ioneer, formerly Global Geoscience, being uh, the second one, uh, which is 25 miles to the west of us. That's known as Rhyolite Ridge. That's a clay boron project. And then to the north of us, there's Lithium America's Kings Valley. And then um, in northern Mexico, there's uh, Sonora, which is owned by Bacanora Lithium. So those three projects are, um, the other three aside from ours, are now at the pre fees and feasibility study level. We've just completed our PEA last year, um, suggesting you know very very robust economics, and um, you know, we see a huge opportunity to bridge the valuation gap that exists between our project and theirs, despite uh, a somewhat negative environment towards lithium investment over the last few months. Can you explain where your project is in Nevada? What, wh where is it in the um, development curve, and what's the current market cap and such? And we'll work our way backwards so you understand the valuations. Okay. So first of all, I want to thank Cypress and Ioneer for leading the way. And um, I actually turned down a number of claystone projects a couple years ago because I was just locked into the idea that we could not liberate the clays without roasting them. When they started coming out with their information, we had access to a couple claystone projects that we felt uh, were similar in nature, and we went ahead and started to develop those projects. We have our projects are in Fish Lake Valley, which is the valley just west of, of uh, Clayton Valley, and we have a project that's just outside of Tonopah, Nevada. So we convinced ourselves that they were, the clays were digestible with, uh, with acids of some sort, and we are now in the process of going through a whole series of digestin digestive testing with different pHs, and then we'll move on to, uh, to more extensive metallurgic testing. Our samples are right now with McClellan Labs up in uh, Sparks, Nevada, and Steve Dixon out of Tucson is leading our metallurgical studies. You, you touch on a very 
interesting subject in this in, in this particular space at this time the metallurgy I don't think you have to worry too much about the demand of lithium there is going to be countless hundreds of millions more batteries and lithium will play a role the question investors are asking now is if the big mining companies are getting involved and we know Rio Tinto is building the Yadar project in Serbia which will have a huge production profile you know how will this change things and the second question is if they do want to get involved wh where can they expand which junior will they buy I, I don't believe a major mining company is going to be interested in small projects Simon you provided me with a graphic here that has uh, some projects these are all I, I, I presume clay Cypress development has a very small market cap relative to what would be about a 50-year mine life but it's about the metallurgy what are you doing to show the market the metallurgy okay great thanks Johnny so um, last year we completed our PEA that included uh, metallurgical studies working on approximately 100 gram samples of our material so it's a scoping level and that helped us determine an estimated operating cost of about $4,000 uh, per ton of lithium carbonate equivalent. So that would fit very well on the global cost curve. However, being that it was a, uh, a PEA scoping level study, uh, you know, a lot of the institutional money is not quite confident in those numbers until you get to a pre-fees level, which is um, really the, uh, the unknown um, in our process right now. So over the past three months, we, you know, we financed and we've commenced some, uh, some more advanced metallurgical study. And uh, what we can say about that, it's a proprietary process. So what we can say about our current met work is that there's key, the key parameters are residence time, temperature, acid concentration, and solids. And we're currently running samples of up to three kilograms. So the samples are split into 200 gram charges and they're run through several leach steps until we get solids, residues, and a final leach solution um, at a steady state. So that's really the feedback that we've been getting on the road is the, the institutions want to see that before they step in. Um, we are well along the way of, of providing that study. Um, over the next few weeks, you'll see you know, potentially some news on metallurgy, uh, the results of the studies that we've been doing. Um, we're about to kick off an infill drill program. That is critical in terms of um, providing additional material to test. And uh, you know, we expect to have our pre-fees published uh, sometime in the first half of this year. Um, but yeah, to your point, it's uh, it's a key step, and we can really. How many? How long is the leach process? This is important because yeah. in copper it could be 90 days, 120 days, 60 days. How long is that process? Yeah, so that that's the key distinction ac across clay projects. Is you know the size of them is really irrelevant. It's the mineralogy that, that matters. And for ours, we're uh, you know we're very fortunate to have uh, clay that leaches relatively quickly compared to the other projects. So we're uh, we're looking at an eight hour leach cycle, um, you know, potentially bringing that down. But eight hours is what we have in the PEA, and that's uh, considerably lower than some of our comps. So, you know, it makes up for some of the grade differences okay. in the cost. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Hints from Heloise. When I ask a question and you can say eight hours and not 60 days, say eight hours. That's all you got to say. <laughs> eight hours. That's important. Now for Chile, uh, Lithium Chile, this is a brine project. Can you please articulate to the audience the difference in evaporation rates? Because there's a big difference between Argentina and Chile. Very important distinction. Please articulate that. Yes, independently that the evaporation rates are important and so on, and the weather conditions and the practically on the Puna, that will be differential uh, evaporation. I think the, the specific brine chemistry is the most important key factor to be considering. When we are talking about leaching, for example, you have to take care that the nature was leaching all the lithium that currently is in the brine, and depends on how you could manage that brine, that will be the, the definition and design of your ponds and your, and, and your next uh, steps. Uh, currently, there are a mix of uh, understanding or, or about, for example, magnesium lithium ratio and so on. And in some cases, magnesium is not so important more than, uh, than other kind of ions like sulfate and so on. So it depends on your specific chemistry that will be important with the other conditions that are going around. Of course, if you go through Chile, the evaporation rates is an advantage against Argentina, for example, in general, I mean, not necessary. But there are other conditions that will be necessary to consider. Take care that in the case of the brine, it's more a chemical industry and needs other kind of approach 
different than in the case of metallurgical because you are not treating a solid material, you are treating a, a, a liquid with a, practically all the periodic table inside there and the management of the other salts is very important for the success of the project. So it, um, that is the key factor, I think, more than evaporation, because evaporation that will be, in, in every case, that will be uh, good enough in order to keep a good concentration. So is everyone clear on the difference here? Forgive me for those that understand lithium very well, but it comes in the brine, which is a, a pool of water, which is evaporated slowly, slowly over as much as six months in some cases, this evaporation Yes, that will be, depends on uh, the final concentration that you want to, to reach. I will give some examples, you know. Uh, the point that you have to, to reach, the maximum point of concentration that you could reach in a, in a brine is the, when your lithium is started to be precipitated like a salt. So depends on your brine, that will be 0.7% or 3%. And uh, depends on that is the size of your pumps and the and the timing that you need for that. Normally, that will be taking from the beginning until the end between six months to twelve months, in according to the design. But uh, in in uh, in the real world, never was a disadvantage to construct the, the, the or, or that kind of timing. The only thing or the only challenge related with that is the management of the pond during the operation. That means other kind of. Uh, a sense about the weather conditions and other kind of conditions, but it's not the time, the big problem. Because in general, when you are starting up a, uh, any project and you are constructing your plant, maybe the construction of the plant that will be nine months. So if you have the first pond ready the first day and you start to pumping, you will be ready your brine for going to the plant when you have the plant ready. So practically, it's the same kind of time. The fact here is how you could operate that is between 6 to 12 months, the, in general, the needs of uh, evaporation that you have in the pond. Okay, really quickly, just one word answer. What is your market cap? One word answer. Our, our, yeah, market, our market cap, cap is about uh, uh, 30 million. I 30 think. million. Oh. What's your symbol, stock symbol? Yes, it's 30 million. Yeah, 30 million. Uh, and what's the stock symbol? Um, L-I-T-H. Okay, Simon, what's your market cap? 16 million and CYP on the venture. What's your market cap? About 30 million, About 30 million stock symbol is LI. LI. Does your project have scale that a major mining company would want to own it? One word answer, yes or no? Yes, yes, of course. Simon. Yes, absolutely. Yes. By a show of hands, in the next two years, who believes the lithium price will continue to have downward pressure and the lithium share should suffer from that? By a show of hands, yes. By a show of hands, who believes the lithium price will have strength? They're not going to have enough supply yet and the price will drift higher, which, makes, which will make lithium shares more, more valuable. By a show of hands, who would, if I put a gun to your head, would you prefer to own hard rock? Put up your hand. Or brine, put up your hand. The brines are having it here. So we see the cost curve. Real short answer, one sentence. If Bolivia comes online like Evo Morales says he's going to do, irrespective of the magnesium, is this a problem? I think it's a problem. I don't think that it will be good advance. They won't advance it. Do you know anything it's about this, Simon? Do you know anything about this? And this myth between hard rock and clay, how much pushback and how much is your valuation held back because you're considered to be like this other kind of clay and people don't understand the metallurgy from the meetings you have? It's becoming better understood with each passing month. And I just want to quickly add that the Gigafactory, which is you know, a couple hundred miles north of us, um, they have plans for a 35 gigawatt plant, which would necessitate between 65 and 80,000 tons of LZE per year. So between all four projects, there's plenty of room for, for everyone to get developed. Okay. Our goal is to be the lowest cost lithium producer in North America. And what we're doing is we are looking for the simplest chemistry inside the clay stones. So our leaching costs are down, our mining costs are down, and that's our goal. 
And I love JP Morgan. And he always said, go as far as you can see. When you get there, you'll see farther. I wish everyone happy investing. Thank you.